Hello. Yeah, and I'm going to ask if they could hear me. Good morning. Can you hear me? Uh, can you hear us po dito? Malinaw po ba ang microphone? Can you hear me? Malinaw po ba? I hope the microphone is loud enough for everyone to hear. Alina Pubang Mike. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So yes, boy, it's loud and clear. Okay, maybe we can start. Good. I, I hope everyone is doing well this morning. Okay, good morning, Po. Is it this? Okay, so um, uh, in case you have questions uh, later, Po, or you have any questions at any, um, in, about any of the slides and uh, what I say, you can, you can contact me on my Facebook page. And um, I have a group that helps me out uh, among young people to advise, to be able to advise the teachers better about um, the millennials or um, you know what what students need uh, for their education today. You know, um, I'd just like to remind everyone of their digital digital certificate. I uh, watch and share today's live learning session and use your key. Take away with at learn as one ph as your caption. Register to the form, which will be provided in the caption of this video to get your e certificates via email. Yeah. Okay. So um, our our uh, lesson for today, no, is about um, innovation no? and what innovation means to us, means for uh, means to all of us in um, among teachers today and also about our, our students, not they they are always um, trying to pay attention to what we tell them. So, siguro naman po, nakikita natin na uh, maraming beses po today sa mga dyaryo, sa mga um, news, nakikita po natin parate yung mga pandemic uh, gadgets no, na ini-invent po natin ngayon. And uh, yan po, uh, ito yung mga nakikita ngayon sa Google na mga bagong labas na mga produkto. And that is a result of what we call innovation today, no? pandemic solutions. And then later on, we will have post-pandemic solutions no? for the economic and social social challenges that we have today. And um, meron din po tayong uh, poverty na kailangan uh, pagtuunan ng pansin. At saka po yung mga sustainable, sustainable development goals na, na ngayon po ay um, kailangan din po siyang aralin, no? lalo na na marami po tayong mga concerns. No? So the question is, how do we create a viable and sustainable economy that generates jobs without polluting the planet? What will this new economy be based on? And um, how do we become a 21st century Filipino innovator and creator? And not just a consumer, applying all our um, knowledge from school, from the university, and our specific field of expertise in a given context. No? Um, yan po ay mga katanungan na 
mga nasa isip ng mga Pilipino uh, ngayon. Um, ang tanong po is, um, with, this, with this talk on education in innovation, how important is innovation? So today, uh, we call our students, mga kabataan po na pumapaligid sa atin ngayon, na sila ay, um, they are the education, they are the generation of uh, innovators. No? And it says here, how important is innovation? Innovators help create the world they live in. This is more fulfilling if we help uh, create things in the world today than if you have someone to create a world for you. Business leaders in particular say that we need many more young people who can create innovations, particularly in the areas of science, technology, and engineering. Uh, ito po yung mga batang usually ay mga kasama ko sa classroom. No? They, they help me out, uh, figure uh, what we can do for the world today. These are Many of these engineers, young engineers, are in civil engineering or some of them are in mechanical engineering. A uh, number are in um, electronics engineering. And uh, this was actually one of the last classes that I had, and we had a great time um, coming up with projects. Uh, I was telling you about them in my last talk na naka-develop po kami ng mask no? um, that's supposed to detect pollution and it's um, it's of Bluetooth technology. And yan po ay prior the pandemic, but these kids are already thinking about it because the challenge that I gave them um, was to think of creative solutions to real-world problems. And uh, they were enjoying it, uh, but at the same time, there were a lot of challenges on my part kasi hindi po siya yung usual class. It was an English class. But at the same time, it was also a creativity, a creativity class. No? So there is a new way now of actually running your, your lectures. Hindi po siya um, masyado na, you know, by the book. Ngayon po, gusto ng mga students na we talk to them, no? we, we, we ask them about what they think about matters. No? So um, how important is innovation? So the world will be increasingly divided, they say, between high imagination enabling countries, which encourage and enable imagination, against low imagination enabling countries. These suppress or simply fail to develop their people's creative capacities and abilities to spark new ideas and spark up new industries. So it was ni Thomas Friedman, uh, ano po siya? He is a globalist, and he's saying that it's very important today that our young people um, increase in their imaginative capacity, you know, that they grow as um, artistic thinkers in whichever field they're in. You know, so uh, this was actually po, uh, one of the field trips that, um, that I had for the year. I, th I think I had uh, at, the lap at the beginning of 2019 a field trip with college students, but this is a field trip with um, with young professionals. They're actually taking their master's in innovation in business. And we had uh, we had a day no, of looking at artworks po, no, sa National Museum. And these are older people. These people are probably uh, already in their late twenties, but but they actually like no what they were what they were seeing and they're learning a lot about um, Philippine art. No? But many of them po are engineers. Some of them are already uh, business executives. No? So it says here that uh, can innovation change the world? So for many years, practitioners of social innovation have highlighted that change does not occur through technology development and economic growth only, but that it often comes from people and communities acting to change their local and larger contexts. This is what you call transformative innovation and that it says that we are no longer business as usual. So um, today I'm going to be talking about the innovation generation. Um, people uh, who are called the millennials have been tagged as the innovation generation. So um, many of them are also in the field of uh, the arts, but people usually talk about the STEM fields, no? um, social innovators and entrepreneurs. No? There was a survey conducted among CEOs by General Electric in 2011, and it says that 69% said that today innovation is more driven by people's creativity than by high levels of high-level scientific research. 
77% agreed that the greatest innovations of the 21st century will be those that have helped the, that have helped to address human needs more than those that had created most profit and those that promoted greener national economies and improved environmental quality. So dito po nagagaling yung mga maraming inventions no? um, na, na maganda. No? At uh, yun po ang hinahanap ngayon ng mga, uh, ng mga tao. Yun pong hindi nakakasira sa, sa planet. No? Um, and that we have to preserve the environment with the new inventions that we, that we make. Whether they are machines, whether they are um, for the health sector. Um, again, I, I show you how I deal with uh, people in the business sector. Uh, we usually take a look at, um, you know, their their softer side, shall we say, no? their 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 philosophical ideas, their their questions about uh, what they see around them, society. You know? I, um, we usually don't really talk about accounting, or we don't talk about um, the profits that maybe uh, you know their businesses had. Um, had given them, but I usually ask them about what they think about the world and um, the beautiful things around them, and um, if they are happy with what's happening in society or they're not. So usually, po, uh, we think about um, we, we think about life. We think about life. Um, this is one of the schools I visited po in the United States, and um, I think I showed this to you before. And uh, I told you that I met um, someone here. His name's uh, Professor Tony Wagner. He made a book called Creating Innovators. And he actually uh, conversed with me for maybe a good hour. And I read his book before going to, to Boston. So he works for the Harvard Innovation Lab. And I accidentally went there because um, he invited me <laughs> by uh, giving me an email. He says, uh, OK. Uh, since you come all the way from the Philippines, uh, you know why? Why? Why don't we talk about these ideas that I have? So everything that I'm going to be talking about po in this talk actually comes from um, many ideas came from Dr. Wagner, Tony Wagner of the book. How do we actually create young innovators for the Philippines today? So um, we notice that they, these millennials, for example, young people, they they can be overly ambitious, no and um, are they naive? No, perhaps. No. Are they impatient? Uh, definitely. Millennials actually, uh, according to the book, take offense at being managed. No. They are differently motivated. Um, but is it a lack of work ethic? No. Uh, Dr. Ed, uh, Dr. Wagner is saying that maybe it's a lack of leadership. No. They are looking for things to engage and interest them in. And so um, we also noticed that uh, they have a great mastery and uh, creative use of new media, you know, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, you know, and that uh, these actually represent new ways of thinking you know, about innovation and indeed uh, fermenting and managing revolutions, uh, like the Arab Spring you know, that happened uh, in the Middle East when young um, teen teens, uh, mi Middle Eastern teens, uh, and university students were very vocal about uh, their displeasure or their um, discouragement no, of uh, things that, that are happening in the government. No? Um, at the same time, uh, they are highly conscious and concerned about a wide range of social problems and proficient in the use of technologies that enable them to learn, to express themselves, and to network. Now, they long to put their mark in the world. This is what our young people are today. Um, and it's very exciting, the panorama. It's just that at times we don't really get to see it because um, maybe we are clouded by our biases or we don't usually get the chance to really talk to them. Uh, but this uh, young generation, the innovation generation as we call them, they're full of dreams and ambitions no? that demand our time and space and active nurturing. And the word nurturing there I emphasize. No? Why? Because many of them are deeply worried about their future, you know, the future of our planet, and they seek healthier lifestyles. You know? um, we see that many of them are uh, uh, eating organic, or they are um, they have uh, they keep watch of you know, the, the time they they sleep you know, and how much of sleep they have. I'm not saying all, 
but I think more and more of them are you know, being concerned or getting concerned about uh, health now. No? And they desire to make a difference than want to make money. No? And that is the truth. No? They are swimming against the tides of tradition in their family, their school, and their social institutions. If you ask them, uh, gusto mo bang uh, malaking kita mo talaga at uh, malaki ang iyong marami kang kotse at you have a fat bank account? And some of them will just shrug their shoulders and say, um, hindi po yan talagang importante para sa akin. But uh, there, are other, um, there are other values that, um, that I take to heart. And so uh, this is me. Usually po, um, as I had said, I talk to my students. Now, um, these are my multimedia students who would take uh, make the Saturday uh, whole day uh, day trip to Tagaytay. This is in Tagaytay. And they tell me, um, what their illustrations were about, you know, uh, because I tell them, oh, what are you thinking of? What are your concerns? And so um, they usually do things in the digital. You know, they're digital artists, they're animators, they're photographers. They, uh, they do 3D animation. But usually during the weekends, they're just normally themselves. You know? So the innovation generation usually, they say, um, are misunderstood by the ones uh, by, by those who are already in their 40s, 50s, and 60s because they have been accustomed to established institutions. You know? And uh, Dr. Wagner is saying that the 40s, the 50s, and the 60s, they don't really make time and space for the younger generation's dreams and ambitions. It's a quite a hard pill to swallow. You know? and, and it says there that conventional schools and businesses don't know how what to do with them. And so uh, usually this is what we try to do with um, the energy bursts of young people. No? Um, they have so much to give. They have, uh, they have a lot of um, energy. And so we usually take them out. You know? this, was a, this was a camp that we had for uh, three weekends, I think, or three consecutive days. And we had almost a total of 1,000 in three days of um, uh, grade 12 students no? and we had so much fun in a camp uh, we had obstacle courses there was a lot of team building a lot of camaraderie and a lot of good time no? but these kids are going to be uh, the future engineers of the country the future artists the future businessmen but this is how we actually uh, get to know them better no? um, this was our digital media studio um, they these people around me were my former students. No? Um, they're graphics artists, and some are now uh, social media planners. No? Um, and uh, in the beginning, they were my students. But uh, after a while, I consider them my colleagues. No? There, there really is a way to the, the, these people's hearts. These people's hearts. No? But at the same time, they, they really want that uh, you work well with them, and you, under, you understand the issues that surround them, no? and even their profession. No? So um, the innovation generation um, would have to be closely paid attention to by world leaders, business executives, educators, policymakers, and parents. No? Kids, to, kids who, are, um, who are to come, no? children, um, high schoolers, college students. We really have to take care of our young people. So in Dr. Wagner's book, uh, The Global Achievement Gap, uh, he cited that there's actually a gap between the skills for achievement and what is tested and taught in our schools. Why is there not a match? You know? This is what's needed in the outside world, but what's taught in the schools are, are quite different in terms of strengths. You know? So there, there seems to be um, a little bit of um, a dilemma there. Uh, these are more pictures of uh, students who you know, I begin to discover have really ambitions in life. A number of my college students um, uh, in, uh, and uh, in, in jobs around the world. Uh, they're engineers, they are doctors, they are, um, many of them are scientists and they win scholarships around the world. I think it's about time we also try to harness our, our talents, no, our own talents here in the Philippines because these kids are more than willing no, to work for the country and see the country progress. They just have so much energy in them and so much promise. If only uh, we take time out no, to, to, to figure out what really are in their heads and uh, what, are their, what are their longings. No? So um, sad to say that there's a, the addictive quality of things digital but they have learned with these things digital to create, connect, and collaborate far more than they were ever allowed in school. 
with a computer. They can have more friends than maybe there are in the campus. No? They can talk to um, their, uh, their um, even maybe some celebrities whom they'd want to ask advice from, influencers. No? Why wouldn't they want to ask us? No? Their teachers who are right beside them in the classroom. Now, why would they have to go out you know, to look for someone interesting? They upload photos, videos, they blog in the internet. This is already second nature to this generation, we know that. They are also exposed to world events sooner and more vividly than any other generation in history. So they are definitely so closely attuned to what is happening now with the COVID-19. And um, you know, we have to, to figure out how we can, um, how we can listen to them more. This is one of the this is one of the, the activities that I'd organize um, with some of my students. Some of them uh, like to go uh, and see places in the world, no, um, and they're very proud to bring our flag. In the in the on the other hand, there are also foreigners who like coming to the Philippines because, um, as exchange students, they see that their fellow uh, Filipino students, no are their, their fellow students, their counterparts in the Philippines, take care of them well. No? So these are actually our exchange students before in Mapua. They came from Madrid. They were so happy, the Spaniards, to be in the Philippines. They spent six months here, and these are engineers. No? Uh, it's also important that we bring them to play sports. No? Uh, since they have so much of physical agility and strength and power, no? they have to... They have to be able to channel that elsewhere, you know, and not just maybe, um, I don't know, play computer games the whole day or, um, uh, I don't know, maybe watch Netflix, no? Um, we like seeing them no, in, other, uh, in other activities. No? This, is a, this, this is a student of mine uh, in multimedia, and she also knows how to do karate, you know, and she, um, somehow she demonstrated this to us. No? So the, the innovation generation is very talented group of people no and thanks to them we will be able to overcome our problems today no? they are very creative they're very enterprising they are our future no? but we must learn how to parent teach and mentor them no? and learn from them as well no? so this is one of the projects that they actually came up with um this is actually just photoshop and uh, it's this is a this is a project for the deaf mute um and um my students in computer engineering teamed up with my multimedia students and my architecture students, civil engineering students, all in one uh, activity. Since it's a um, multi, uh, it's it's a course where you find um, students not from different departments. No? It's a subject where you find uh, an intermingling of courses. No? So they came up with this project called the Cairo. Uh, the je gesture watch, no, you know, uh, friends. We actually came up with them with this around five years ago. They're already thinking about uh, wearable tech, and it's only now that uh, we're catching up because of COVID nineteen. But these kids have already been thinking about the deaf mute. Of course, it had to take me to, I not like to prod them, to encourage them, to think beyond, say, making cars or um, maybe also uh, devising a way for for air conditioners to work better no, but maybe there are other products that filipinos might like to try you know, even if it's at the ideation level so it says here what is actually innovation as we have been uh, uh, talking about it uh, in the beginning it says that these are original ideas and insights that gain value then by implementing them they are accepted and used by significant numbers of people Something so successful that people can't remember what life was like before it was introduced. These are novel and creative ways to create value through new products and services or new business models or new processes. These are creative problem solving applied to real world problems, taking in real needs and creating a bridge to a solution. Uh, this was when I went to UP Miyagao. And the UP Miyagao uh, community, teachers and students, have been helping um, fisher folk uh, along the coastlines no? um, who have small fish pens or who have uh, small uh, fishing businesses. Um, and they are here to learn more about art science. So they invited me maybe a year and a half ago, and they were 
I was telling them about design, business, and technology. And these are uh, these are far these are fishermen no? and these are uh, business people who are engaged in uh, the fishing industry. But they are small uh, small businesses, and they came to attend. No? So uh, innovation can be found everywhere. It can be encouraged everywhere. No? It's value creation, and uh, it detects or also captures value no? um, that others create. No? So you can be a venture capitalist. You can be someone who can support uh, innovators. No? It's to figure out how to put things together and add value to them that we uh, didn't see before. It's figuring out the right problem to be solved, the right question to ask, and then figuring out a better way to solve the problem. So these are my friends from Tesoros. Um, this is uh, Nina, and they are finding a way to do sustainable fabric. So um, uh, we uh, we just discontinued our meetings for a sustainable fashion um, uh, project, uh, and uh, we had we had a lot of fun because we were um, really trying to collaborate with Nina's mom, uh, the very famous Patis Tesoro. So even uh, Mrs. Tesoro is thinking about uh, you know the the, the, the environment no? um, through the fabrics that she actually uh, uses. No? It's very exciting, this uh, innovation idea. No? So I continue with saying that teachers are guardians of civilization. No? In a completely rational society, the best of us would be teachers, and the rest of us would have to settle for something less because the passing of civilization along from one generation to the next ought to be the highest honor and the highest responsibility anyone could have by Lee Ayakoka, a business leader whose book uh, maybe we've read years ago. She's saying that the teachers, he's saying that the teachers have a lot of responsibility because they're the ones who will pass to the students what life, what life really is about. It's not just, it's not just getting good grades, uh, learning math, English, science, technology, but there are other things that are important to know. Uh, in life. No? We have to take care of our country. No? Um, and here we are with my students in, uh, I think these are civil engineering students, in a conference. I invited them to a conference about um, globalization. No? Uh, they were here with me. This is an outside of campus activity. Uh, some of them are very, um, very humorous. This this one group uh, named themselves Split, like with split personalities. Now they can also be very creative. These are young architects. You know? So we are actually here building civilization. We must have a sense of civilization, a sense of accomplishment about our race. You know? um, and this, uh, I already mentioned this in the last uh, in the last talk, but let's repeat it again. We must have. Um, a historical imagination. We must learn history. What is our country about? No? What is nation building about? No? And it's not really just about um, complaining about uh, complaining about systems that don't work, no? um, disappointments about uh, institutions, organizations. Um, and actually, the Filipinos are a very peaceful race. We um, we are we are actually. Um, uh, we are a, a maamo race, no? Uh, sabi nga, magiliw, no? We are refined, graceful people, no? But at times, uh, we, we cannot seem to help um, but argue, no, our way into, I don't know, a conversation, no? But we are a very beautiful people, no? With our culture, with our uh, art. No? This is my student in engineering actually looking at textiles in the Ayala Museum, no? We have to observe the little things around us no, and appreciate uh, culture, the beauty that is around us. No? Uh, here I am. I usually get to talk to my, my students when we are in the mountains. No? Again, these are artists uh, doing a photography uh, exploration of um, rainforests. No? So how do parents and teachers actually prepare the youth for the future? How are adults preparing the future for the future citizens? How do we educate the net generation, the digital natives? No? Are we really taking it upon ourselves, no? uh, this task of passing on to our children civilization? 
this is a very civilized act on the part of my student. Uh, this was a 5.30 class that I had in Mapua, and um, someone suddenly gave me a donut. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, but he probably had noticed that I was so tired. And so suddenly I saw a donut on my desk and I said, who gave this to me? He said, um, see, see Mark Po. I said, and I asked him, thank you so much. Well, why did you give it? And then he said, I noticed, ma'am, that you look very tired. And so he gave me the donut. This is civilization. Um, but, you know, today there's a lot of talk about other things, you know, future, the future, the past, you know. Futurists say that new technologies give individuals so much power to connect and share resources in which networks of individuals, not big organizations, solve a host of problems by reinventing business, education, medicine, banking, government, and scientific research. There's so much of interconnection right now, uh, and technology has empowered us to do that. Suddenly, large organizations don't even matter. I don't know why um, you know you are listening to me today when I am not a movie star or I am not really a guru of education. It's just that I, I want to to reach out to my fellow teachers, but somehow somewhere we find each other, you know. Um, and this is what's happening because of the internet. No? Um, before things were determined for us, but right now we are more. Um, We've gained, we've gained power ourselves just by, uh, you know, choosing what to see, choosing what not to see, what not to attend. No? The internet is also lowering transaction costs, costs of connection, coordination, and trade, and pointing to a future that increasingly favors distributed sources and social solutions to some of our most immediate needs and our most intractable problems. Today, we have um, education care of, of Vibal at a very small cost before we had to attend uh, big conferences. No? But today, maybe with just a little bit of, um, you know, um, budget, you know, we can get, uh, we can be informed, we can have, we can have education. No? Uh, on the other hand, uh, if you are not a futurist, uh, some people who are into history are saying that history has to be able to predict the future. No? What is the role of the humanities, philosophy, um, history, the social sciences. He says there that we have to have long-term thinking. Why would we have to look at the future so much when we can look at the past and say, what were the Filipinos 100 years ago? Maybe we can learn from that. Or the pandemic, didn't this happen in 1917? Why can't we look at what happened in 1917? Because this, this is an unprecedented pandemic. Now, so the historians, those of us history teachers, should also see the value of our role in a highly technological society and not say, ay, wala na ako, hindi na ako, useless na ako na nagtuturo ng Pilipino dahil wala nang magkailangan ng Pilipino, lahat na lang ang wikang Ingles or yung historian, ano na lang ang silbi ko, of course not. No? There's so much of uh, intertwining that can happen today in terms of technology, in terms of um, other uh, technology vis-a-vis -vis, uh, other fields, no? So we can all tie up with technology and find out um, how we can have a very feasible collaborate, collaboration because here it says that it's, it's very possible. No? What is our major contribution as a Filipino teacher, as an art teacher, as a music teacher, as a history teacher in a highly technological society? It can't always be just people who I don't know, run the businesses, who have a way with uh, the computer. It can't be that way. So this is a class, again, that I had with uh, the masteral students. And um, there we are looking at uh, the work of uh, Juan Luna. And this is a guy that we had in the National Museum. Everyone is interested. I had some uh, people who were very critical about art. But then in the end, I think they were won over. No? Here we are figuring out how we can strengthen Philippine branding prior to the pandemic. That was my specialization. What is Philippine branding about? Why do we have to um, consume so much of foreign products when we can actually patronize our own products? And so here are my students coming up with a project that will fuse design business technology, but in the context of the Philippines. History, culture, and nation is very important. No? We have to possess 
sense of pride in our heritage. We have to have love of country because of the beauty of our land no? and the bravery of our heroes. No? Uh, we can't forget what Rizal had done for us or Apolinario Mabini, for example, uh, um, General Luna, no? Gregorio del Pilar. No? Um, and what we have now are actually the products of the minds and hands of our ancestors, no? uh, their creativity and industry. No? The Filipino traditions and values that we hold dear, these were just actually passed to us. And so today we are challenged no, by the new needs, the aspirations, and beliefs of our time and society. Uh, and so, uh, well, I try my best <laughs> to teach uh, art history, Philippine art history to STEM students. Now, these are science, technology, engineering, and uh, math majors, no? And uh, we have fun. We learn about uh, indigenous um, houses and uh, uh, art. No? Why? Because it's very important for young Filipinos today to know their identity, no? to be able to uh, find their way uh, in, in, in cyberspace. They have to be so uh, rooted in what, they, what their identity is about as a Filipino. I think we run the risk of actually losing our uh, our nationality no? if we are not careful, consuming so much of the foreign. So this is my passion no? that uh, we use technology so that we learn about the future. Now, what about um, the most peaceful modern revolution that has ever happened was in um, you know was in EDSA. So we learn about this in my class. These are actually civil engineers. And we have uh, we have these activities in class. No? There's nothing like on-site learning. I am actually a passionate advocate of on-site learning. It's just that uh, with the pandemic, maybe there's going to be a new normal. But we can't mm, wait to return back to what we previously had. And I believe that this was how I was very effective no? in the, the forming of minds. No? So uh, what is our situation at home and in school? How do we educate young people to become innovators? What are the capacities we should develop in them? What skills matter most for our future? What constitutes a meaningful STEM or art education? No? What ecosystems, parental teaching, and mentoring influences have been important to this development? Is there no national strategy or concerted effort to nurture the creativity of children if they are to become innovators? What can be done with the potential for the misuse and excessive dependence on, tech, of, on technology? We have to be very keen on um, the psychological, the, uh, even the physical effects of the computer on our children. How can parents carefully monitor and limit screen time? Uh, this is actually my family. I hope they don't mind my showing their picture here. But uh, I actually prodded everyone, my brother, my sister-in-law, and my little pamangkins to um, look at the paintings here in the National Museum. And everyone just had so much fun, my sister, uh, because we have to start at home. On the internet, unlike in daytime classrooms, young people um, act on their curiosity. They have so much to see in the internet. And so that's why at times we see them there uh, almost uh, the whole day. They Google stuff for fun. They, they love following hyperlinks to see where these may lead. They're very curious. Uh, these are, again, my multimedia students, computer artists. And they've taught me a lot about the digital realm. They used to do downloading for me. They'd um, give me e-copies of books. I am so interested about um, 3D animation and web design, user interface, a user experience. But at the end of the day, these people would just really need to have a friend um, to talk to them about uh, maybe their needs in school. But apart from that, um, their difficulties at home. So this is parental leadership. Parents and teachers are leaders. They came ahead and have enough experience behind them to back them up. Ours is a child-centered approach. Ours is character formation, to, have, to make them have good habits, to have uh, a discipline in industry, intellectual virtues, because you can't have an innovator who's going to break down because there's so much, um, there's so much of pressure and demand from society 
from an innovator, and we're going to learn that in a little while. What can parents do to hone creativity, to hone intellectual um, intellectual resilience, no? discipline? Uh, first, yeah, we have to have a study room conducive for the learner. Where is our child when he is studying? No? Is he away from the computer? Do we give them limited time uh, playing computer games, for example, on weekdays? Do, you, do we have a reading time for them or some quiet time? Maybe some kids are really not so keen on having books, but actually a number still want to read books. No? I love bringing my... Um, my students to the mountains. No? We've climbed Mount Batulao three times. No? I love making them uh, write essays so that you know, I really see uh, what are in their thoughts and how better to help them maybe um, you know, in, in some of the things that uh, they, are, they are carrying in their, in their hearts, in their minds. I remember someone saying that when he comes home, he doesn't have anyone to talk to because uh, his parents are are um, working abroad and what does he do he immediately goes to his computer and logs in and maybe finds a friend somewhere out there i also like giving art exercises uh, um, whether they are artists or maybe they are not we also have to hone social skills uh, again this is uh, these are these are actually uh, my this is my family um, it's very important we bring our families to see museums and to to go out no and have uh to see the to see land <laughs> to see beautiful um scenery for example or see um a go to the beach um this is again some engineers uh, these are my business students no this these are business students and um, uh, information technology students trying to, again, look at um, art. No? It's very important that they get in touch with uh, the human side no, of things and to touch things, actually, and not just have everything uh, I don't know, um, given to them digitally. <coughs> Christine, do you think I can ask for water? <coughs> Um, can I ask for water? Uh, so what are the types of teachers that we can have uh, around? So the students are actually um, telling us their experiences with their, some of their teachers. And um, it's, not so, uh, it's, not so, it, it's not so good that we hear that um, the digital natives actually find the internet far more compelling than their teachers <laughs> who stand in front of them. The, the, the internet is better you know, than their teacher. Are teachers going to be replaced now by um, things digital? You know? We'd rather have uh, I don't know, like a, a robot you know, or a video telling us things. You know? um, and these were teachers actually that the students identified. Now, they weren't really so helpful. Uh, it's good to engage them in other types of activities. This is a conference that we uh, that we organize, no? and we invite um, uh, filmmakers, we invite uh, film colorists, film editors, no? so that we they can share with our students their experience uh, in, in the industry. Um, elementary school teachers are very important so that kids develop their unbounded imagination, their curiosity, their creativity. Um, this, is a, this is a graph that I'd like you to see. It says here um, that the fourth industrial revolution, if you can take a look at that, thank you. Uh, it has to be a development of the whole person, you see there, uh, across multiple intelligences. So let's try to focus on the fourth industrial revolution. The teacher will no longer just be the expert, not talking in front of the room. But the teacher is going to be a coach. She is more of a facilitator. Uh, the teacher is actually on top of lifelong learning and must tell herself that anyone can teach. Even the students can teach her or him a thing or two. And um, well, the device can be with them, but it can also be um, a learning that's anytime, anywhere with their device. But there has to be learning. Um, 
I was telling you about this class that had a different way of, uh, that was organized in a different way. So if you see, there is no teacher. <laughs> it's them running the show. And all I have to do is to, you know, to see whether people are learning from their classmates and if they've done their, uh, their assignment of research so that they can tell us about what they know. And I'm there at the back, uh, uh, you know, just uh, trying to organize themselves you know, and coach, um, coach in a particular manner. I cannot elaborate on the coaching strategy right now, but there is a way. We can't just be lecturing the whole time. And again, there are what you call mentors. You know? Mentors are those who are no longer their teachers, but continue to guide them uh, in their creative endeavors. You know? uh, this is my uh, former student, Julie. And she is now uh, a culinary artist in Los Angeles. And recently we, we talked. And she's so fascinated by baking and cooking. But she's also a ballerina. So we still keep in touch. This is my former grade school student, Noreen. And she's now um, also an, a student of mine. And she is into uh, social entrepreneurship. Very fascinating because she's trying to help her city of Iloilo, um, you know, just... Uh, soar high no? and, and progress no? even um, on its own no? without having to rely in, on Manila the whole time. No? And there's a lot of things happening in you know, the other parts of the country. So there has to be some kind of mentoring happening, discovering the talents you know, of young people by talking to them, no? um, finding out where their creative capacities are. Uh, this is also my student from Ramon Magsaysay High School. Her name is Bea. And um, I've seen her all throughout her senior high, grade 11. She got, um, she had a scholarship uh, in the university to study, uh, to, do, to, be, to be a teacher, because she'd like to be a teacher. This is me with my civil engineering student, Justine. And we're trying to do an exhibit. Uh, you see, you can actually tap the potentials of these people. And they don't always have to be calculating. Uh, they don't have to be in um, with, with the digital all the time. No? But there are ways also of bringing out the best in them. And this, to me, has been uh, quite helpful uh, as a teacher and to them as students. No? It's very crucial that policymakers and school administrations know um, how know what to do you now with a with a creative capacity and the communicative com capacity of young people today it's crucial the years between 3 to 12 in high school social skills would have to be developed and in college skills need to be refined you know? it's just that today uh, we are suffering from this um uh from the pandemic and like we have to rethink about uh, the future by also looking at the past you know? They say that four-year-olds are the most curious. By the time they are six to five, they stop asking questions because they realize that in school, the teachers are just always looking for the right answers. No? But high school students also still show inquisitiveness, but sometimes we stop them from getting curious. And when they're grown up, again, um, there seems to be some kind of hesitancy now to learn more. Um, and so sometimes it says here that many of the ways curiosity and creativity are discouraged. Many, uh, many of the ways curiosity and creativity uh, are discouraged. Now, in many ways, they are discouraged. They are educated out of us. Now. But creativity is a habit. Now. Like any habit, creativity can either be encouraged or discouraged. You see here a little girl. Uh, look at all that curiosity and excitement in her eyes now, when she realized that there are animals around her. Or uh, this, this little girl who is into um, baking, you know, and she is there with these adults trying to mentor her in baking. You know. So this is education and innovation. You know, when we see intrinsic motivation, you know, students would need, to be, would need to want to learn, and it's a desire on their part, not because they are forced to. You know. The goal is to develop um, a person or persons with intrinsic motivation to be lifelong learners, architects of their own learning and careers to pursue uh, 
uh, to pursue their passion while progressing towards a deeper sense of purpose that is to desire to change the world for the better. Added here are the innovator skills, perseverance, willingness to experiment, take calculated risks, tolerate failure, and the capacity for design thinking in addition to critical thinking. Uh, let us go through this um, uh, more on student and learner. The student learns in a classroom. He is directed by the teacher. He works within a defined time. He is motivated by grades, follows goals that are set and monitored by the teacher, and achieves by listening and following instruction. He is primarily a person enrolled in a school and other educational institution. He attends class in a course to attain the appropriate level of mastery of a subject under the guidance of an instructor. He devotes time outside class to do whatever activities the instructor assigns that are necessary either for class preparation or to submit evidence of progress towards that mastery. That is a student. But a learner is different. He learns anytime and anywhere. He directs and supports his or her own learning. Um, they work at their own pace. They are moted by the mastery of skills. They develop own learn their own learning goals and they monitor their own progress. They achieve by active collaboration and give feedback with others. And here, the learner actually designs their own learning experiences based on their passions and interests. They actually are really not so monitored by the teacher. On their own, they want to learn, you know? uh, just like uh, this group of people. They're excited to learn about um, uh, old buildings or like uh, heritage structures. You know? So a learner is very different from a student. I think that's where the linchpin is. That's where the problem lies today because uh, online learning would mean that you have a learner at the other side of the spectrum. How do you know that you know, students uh, are just pretending that they are listening to you? A learner is motivated and can do things on his or her own. And so that is a problem now because we are really not so sure who among our constituents who among our students are already learners. So we, uh, apart from, so it's really, um, there's really a, a, you know, like a problem upon problem here because in as much as the teachers are learning online skills, the students are also trying to be learners, but you can't force learning on anyone. It has to be done at a very young age. So a person is finding out about a subject or how to do something is a learner on his own. He doesn't need all the time his mother there or his teacher. Learning can occur in the absence of teaching. That's why I think the difficulty is that our students suddenly uh, have, are forced to become learners, but they're not. You know? uh, learning is a mature way of wanting knowledge. So learners can learn without teachers, but students are only students when they have teachers. Now, an innovator, it says here, acquires habits of lifelong learning. They are not just students. They have curiosity and imagination through a whole brain approach, but grounded in the foundations of one's own specific field of interest, expertise, while operating on multidisciplinary and integrative ways of thinking that are inclined towards inquiry on nature, culture, and one's locality. Uh, this is the bomb, everyone. And um, actually, this is a conclusion, even if I still have more slides. It's actually difficult to raise an innovator because first, they have to learn at the very beginning a love for learning. They have to want to learn on their own and be fascinated by the world around them. That's going to be difficult, um, you know, just with online learning. Why? Because creating an innovator is usually offline. Offline. That is the bomb. But anyway, it's supposed to be blended learning. They have to know how to use technology, but at the same time, there are some very elementary uh, skills that they need to learn. You know? and this is a hard fact. The innovator is a lifelong learner who is intrinsically motivated. He is self-propelled. He has self-possession and he has self-dominion. And a child has to learn to reach this level. And apart from that, I talked about the soft skills before. He has to be creative. He has to know design thinking, computational thinking. He has to know how to communicate. And, um, oh, sorry, this is supposed to be collaboration at the end. So here you go. 
creativity, the child needs to know how to think. Just that. Doesn't say anything here about technology. Design thinking primarily is learning how to think. Computational thinking starts with thinking and writing. Communication skills starts with thinking, writing, and saying things or talking. Collaboration is already thinking, writing, saying, and doing. Uh, I very much encourage a fusion of art and science. And this will equip the, the innovator no, uh, on being more creative for his scientific endeavors. No? Curiosity he has to have a lot of curiosity. This is my, um, my architecture student. And look at that, everyone. Look at her background. It's already digital. And all of these bacon, uh, this is like her steak. These are all paper. <laughs> Can you imagine how creative this person is to build, to craft, no? out of paper, steak, and potatoes? To me, this is creativity. No? When the tangible, the tangible is, um, is involved. No? Uh, creativity is a mental habit. It's a mental habit. But at the same time, it's... Um, it's it's a it's a training no, in the liberal arts, literature, history, politics, science, no, the seven major arts. No. This will help the person be more human, cultured, and refined. This is design thinking. No. Um, it's really not uh, that complex, but um, an innovator needs to know in the very first place how to feel. Now, if your student is always with a computer, how would he know how to socialize with other people and you know, at, the, you know, at the very least listen to other people? Only then will we, he be able to define solutions to problem, ideate or create, uh, imagine ideas in his brain, hmm? prototype a product and test a product. But look at that, everyone. First, it says empathize. He needs to know more about the world and other people to put things in perspective. This is from Stanford University. And then he integrates things that he, he learns around him. Um, optimism is so essential here. Uh, you know, it's always like a failure and a mistake that needs to be overcome. And now if, if your young people are depressed or because they... You know, they have turned that way because they can't talk to anyone. Then how can we have optimistic innovators around us? You know? There's a lot of experimenting, um, experimentalism that happens when uh, there is uh, innovation. You know? um, design thinking is about good design. You know? It's a Renaissance attitude. It is a very intelligent way of making things visible. Um, there's a lot of describing, analyzing, interpreting, and judging of, of works. For them to be able to create something uh, of their own, they have to be able to observe other products around them. Now, they also have to have computational, they have to have computational thinking. No? And these are usually related to decomposition, pattern recognition, algorithms, and abstraction. And of course, we were already saying earlier uh, that communication is very um, encouraged no? to be developed. No? Kids would need to talk. Kids would need to know how to write. No? So here I am sometimes forcing people to talk. <laughs> and people need to know how to collaborate. No? Because today, innovation is about a collaboration of fields, no? a collaboration of multi uh, disciplinal um, people. No? But uh, I'd like to remind everyone, these are really the bare essentials. No? Be, our students would need to know how to read, write, and speak. Even if they really don't have highly sophisticated gadgets, I think these are first important. No? Um, and so uh, today, and I, I'll be ending soon, um, I came up with a class for professionals in case they'd want to, uh, you know, like review their art skills and um, get in touch with their human side. No? So these are people in the STEM and business uh, professions, and I invite them to relearn 
classic art. No? So that's literature, the visual arts, music, dance, theater, and philosophy. And uh, as I had said, this art class is exclusive to people in the sciences, technology, engineering, and math, and um, business professionals. Why? Because a number of them admit that you know they'd want to know they'd want to know more about art they'd want to get in touch with their humane side and so usually uh well before the pandemic uh i i do a lot of um you know uh collaborations and discussions with professionals so this is my art class uh inspired by dr david edwards as i had told you in my previous talk you can watch it again um and he listens a lot to innovators and projects that uh, they want to create. This is me observing a biochemical engineer, uh, a computer scientist, and an architect, and they're all trying to make um, a water filter that is uh, crafted in, or inspired by the human kidney. Uh, these are uh, people, these are students of Harvard Engineering. I also, as I said, observed um, a prototyping and a prototyping class or, or uh, um, an art uh, a think box no? a think box is um uh, a complete ecosystem of innovation no? so it's uh it's for engineers and uh i remembered having gone there sent i was sent to mapua to actually see this prototyping lab and there's a lot of creativity happening in this very well equipped laboratory how we wish we could have the same thing in the philippines no? And so um, I, I'll tell you a little bit about my art class, and um, these are precisely uh, my new initiative. I mean, these are my initiatives now that there's this pandemic, getting in touch with professionals. So this is our <laughs> this is our uh, Zoom class. Well, it's not a class; it's called Table for Five. A Table for, for Five is an art and science conversation. Uh, so artists talk talk to scientists and scientists talk to artists and we learn a lot from each other. So I have these, um, you know, these are people ages 22 to 32 and uh, you know, they love it. They love it that they, uh, they learn from each other. A fashion designer learning from a construction management engineer or a lawyer slash material science engineer learning from uh, a film major or a philosopher. It's very exciting. And so uh, we, this is me. This is where I uh, really <laughs> get to know uh, my students. Uh, these are all multimedia arts uh, students. Uh, this was almost like eight, nine years ago in our photography um, class. And uh, so basically I end with these ideas because it's time. Today, this is my conclusion. Um, if you have questions, you can write to me or you can keep in touch with me. But the conclusion is that these are the five um, ways or the five uh, strengths that a young, in a, Filipino, a young Filipino innovator can have. You can have intellectual resilience, cultural diplomacy, a level of curiosity that is high. Um, he has to have some kind of creative capacity and he has to be an expert in his field. Expertise is very important. So I'll just hurry up with this. So I'd end with this, uh, Tony Wagner, who trained me in creating innovators. He says, how can, he, he told me, he, he, he greeted me, uh, he talked to me for an hour and um, he greeted the Filipinos by writing on my book. He signed it and he, he's asking the Filipinos this question. How can we learn to be a Filipino leader who is inclined towards an intelligent and thoughtful risk-taking attitude while embracing trial and error? which are the hallmarks of technopreneurs and to acquire initiative and entrepreneurship, exploring connections among formal learning, citizenship and service to the community so as to live responsibly, productively and creatively in a dramatically changing world. So he's asking that of us Filipinos. And the teachers I hope learned today at one point in time and the parents no, and how we can create an ambiance of learning for our students. It's basically uh, an ambiance of care, you know, uh, that we care for them as, um, as individuals. You know, and that's how we can bring out the best in them. I'd like to uh, invite everyone
to a movement that I created. <laughs> That's why it's called Mind Movers. We um, we are motivated by our act by our advocacy, which is education and innovation. We help create a nurturing and robust environment for learners to thrive in the twenty first century. Uh, a number of uh, teachers and um, moms have been asking me about creating the ambience for their future innovator. There's so much to do, but uh, we remain hopeful. Uh, we remain excited about the future because there's so much promise and there's so much hope in our young people. So I hope everyone has learned a thing or two today. I'd just like to remind you again about the, um, the certificates. So as I had said, uh, I have a page. You can also ask me questions there. You can look for Professor Corinne Romabiles. Meanwhile, I um, remind you again that to get your digital certificate, uh, you watch and share today's live learning session and use your key takeaway with at learn as one ph as your caption. Register to the form which, will, um, which is provided in the caption of this video to get your e-certificate via email. Um, yeah, so if there's nothing else, uh, you can get in touch with me since I like to talk, make friends with people. So congratulations to all you wonderful teachers out there and to all the moms and dads uh, in their homes doing their best to reach out to the young innovator, um, to their young innovators at home and in school, in their online schools. Good morning. Thank you, everyone.